This is gonna be down for me. You're roasting me. As an infamous Butterfingers, I have dropped my fair share of phones. I present exhibit A, my iPhone 6 that regrettably succumbed to that most cruel of mistresses, gravity. Fortunately, Apple has the solution. For the low, low price of just 49 US dollars, they will ship the Genius Bar to you, allowing you to do your very own iPhone repairs from the comfort of your home. That's right, the kit in front of me includes everything I need to replace a broken screen, dead battery, and more. Thank you, Apple. From the bottom of my heart, you are truly gracious and benevolent. As usual, the story is a little bit more complicated than that and also a bit more sponsored by Cable Mod. Cable Mod makes cables to last and their power supply and keyboard cables are each a great way to spice up your system. Complete your PC setup today with 10% off all their products using the code 10CableMod at the link below. When I was a wee lad, the solution to this problem was simple. You dropped off your phone at that mall kiosk that smelled vaguely of cheese and a couple of hours later, you'd pick it up with a brand new screen that smelled vaguely of cheese. These days, the process of having a phone repaired has evolved as much as the phones themselves. Starting with the iPhone 6, this one coincidentally, certain components like the home button became electronically tethered to the logic board and replacing them outside of Apple official channels would result in error messages, an anti-consumer practice that Apple justifies by saying it is necessary for security. It's not. What it's actually about is controlling access to parts and services which preserves profit for Apple and its partners, as long as those partners play by Apple's stringent rules. However, with the launch of the self-service repair program in April, Apple, at least on the face of things, seems to be opening the floodgates wide so any owner of an iPhone 12, 13, or third gen SE can use this service, and it's a good bet that the next iPhone will get the same treatment. But wait, did I say any owner? Before you can even place an order for replacement parts, Apple does have a way to weed out the folks who might be a little less serious or a little less capable, no offense. The repair manuals for all of these devices are freely available on their website. Kudos, Apple, by the way. And step one is to RTFM. Inside these FMs, each procedure is well-documented and photographed. Kudos again, Apple. But we also find the first major caveat of the self-repair service. Regardless of which iPhone you have, there are only five user replaceable components. The display, cameras, taptic engine, battery, and speaker. Now in fairness, this will cover most whoopsies, but if you've got a phone with physical damage to the frame, but that otherwise functions perfectly, or if you've got charging problems with the lightning connector, you are going to have to look elsewhere. Speaking of problems, we've got a behind the scenes look at the tech problems that we encounter here at the office. It's up on floatplane.com, so go sign up to check it out. From here, the requirements for renting or buying tools and replacement parts are surprisingly simple. First, you need to prove that you read the manual at least far enough to get the little code from it. Second, you must provide the serial number of the device to be repaired. And third, you're going to need some money. Given the choice, we would recommend renting rather than buying the equipment. It's surprisingly affordable. You pay only 49 US dollars to cover both tools and shipping in both directions. And you've got one week from the date of their arrival to perform your repair. There's unfortunately no option for time extension though. If you end up needing them for longer than those seven days and Apple will charge you an unspecified fee along with tax if you're late to give them back or the full cost of the tools if you don't return them at all. If you do wish to buy rather than rent, watch out because while some tools will have the same function or dimensions, they may be referred to by different part numbers in different manuals, making it a bit of a chore to search for anything by part number and make sure you're getting all the exact right phone guillotines. Another huge plus of renting is that it's much more of an all-in-one solution. You choose the kit that's appropriate for your phone and it arrives with everything you need in hard shell Pelican cases with wheels. I like it. For us though, we knew that the tools would have to stick around the office for longer than a week, so we chose to pay for them in full. That's why they came in these boring cardboard boxes. Though, we did note while unboxing them that Apple uses a high quality closed cell phone that is cut to the exact dimensions of our tools and everything arrived in perfect working order. Speaking of unboxing, you can do it in comfort with the short circuit hoodie from LTTstore.com. Why don't we play with some of these? Yeah. All right, 
Full credit for quality, they're using Vera bits and these look like Vera torque drivers. For removal, it doesn't matter which one we use. I'm just gonna grab a random one. One thing Apple doesn't include is a parts tray. So if you wanna keep track of these tiny little screws, and these are actually on the bigger side, you're gonna want to get, at the very least, a magnet off your fridge. Then we loosen the clamp, slide it into the heated display pocket. <coughs> clamp that bad boy into place. Oh not coming out. Again, credit Apple. I have paid more for less when it comes to the complexity and quality of the tooling on things like camera equipment. These are probably the contacts for, ah, yep, there they are, for heating up this whole assembly. That lock, I like it. No offense to iFixit, but it kind of makes the eye opener look like a caveman tool. <laughs> you microwave it and put it down on the edges that you're trying to soften the glue on. <laughs> This will freely spin rather than allow you to over torque it onto your display. See that? It stops going down. Now we power up our heated display removal fixture. You just rotate this knob and hit the switch at the back. Oh, is it going now? Right now it's going through a cycle where it needs to be at temperature for two minutes, after which time we are going to lower the suction cup on and we should be able to pull the display off. All right, jeez. Now the knob goes down as far as it goes. This buddy goes into place. Can confirm it is a little toasty now. Buddy, you gonna peel up? Does it say how long it will take? I can definitely see the display bowing up. We wanna aim for the, I guess this is the bottom of the phone, bottom edge. Pop that into place and it should be as simple as turning the knob counterclockwise. And they want 30 seconds. Oh yeah. Oh, it's pulling. With the display up five degrees, we are clear to pull the suction cup off, ooh, come on, and pull the phone out of the heated display fixture. Mm, mm, you could, ooh, you could burn yourself on this. All right. Ooh. Having gone through that, I gotta say, having the proper tools, it's a good thing. With that said, Nobody's blaming companies like iFixit for not having the proper tools. If Apple made them broadly available, we'd all love to have the proper tools to do this work. Even this little machined holder is a potential lifesaver because it prevents you from putting too much strain on these ribbon cables, which can cause them to shear. I just broke a ribbon cable. But tools are only half of the equation. You won't be repairing much of anything without new parts to replace the old busted ones. That's where things get a little bit less friendly. Apple offers a bundle of parts for each of the user serviceable components. But be warned, these bundles are not necessarily all encompassing. And you will need to double check with the manual to ensure you're getting all of the small odds and ends you need. You can order an infinite number of consumables at once, like shims, adhesives, and screws, but but only one of each major component at a time. Worryingly, there is no word on how many of these you're allowed to purchase in the lifetime of your device, or if there's some kind of waiting period between buying two of the same components. Say you want to replace your battery once a year for the lifetime of your device. Will Apple cut you off at some point? We don't know, but what we do know is that they could, and this is such a clear indication of Apple's true attitude toward user repair, that it's, a privilege that they are granting you rather than your right. We'll just have to let the service mature then. And if there is such a limit, I'm sure someone's gonna be clumsy enough to find it and post about it on Reddit. Bringing us then to our next stumbling block for Apple, time. In addition to the shipping time for your order from the self-service repair shop, you're going to need to factor in one to three days of processing time before anything will even be put in the mail. So Apple is making this service an option, but if you need your phone back up and running quickly, like, oh, I don't know, most people, it's unlikely to be an attractive one compared to, I'm Linus from Linus Tech Tips. <laughs> and we need to talk about those fees, or at least we wanted to. When we called in, the Apple store flat out refused to offer any kind of quote for work over the phone, insisting that we come in for a service estimate. I do understand that not every diagnosis can be done remotely, but this policy seems to exist only to give store employees an opportunity to present alternate solutions like say, for example, new devices. Especially if you consider that they also have this page up on their website, which you can find if you dig hard enough. So I guess we'll use numbers from here. Let's take our iPhone 12 Pro Max here as an example. We're looking at $330 to let Apple take care of an out of warranty display replacement. That's a lot less than the 700 plus dollars that we spent buying all these tools, but 
there are still some problems here. Even if you choose to rent, you're looking at right around $340 for that same procedure using those same tools if you do it yourself. And that is after Apple's generous credit for returning your old parts. For some context, by the way, the used battery and screen of this particular iPhone were only worth about $58 combined. Even the most unfair video games offer a better buyback price than that on your used gear. And if we forget to send those parts back, that $340 figure jumps to $375. How on earth does the math work on this, Apple? I mean, I can understand that these are genuine replacement parts, not to be confused with Say, for example, this OLED screen we got on eBay for about 200 bucks. But if your own technicians who presumably are paid, actually it's about $20 an hour, can do this for $329 with non-eBay screens, then something's gone terribly wrong if it costs us more to do it ourselves. As a first timer, Sarah's screen repair on her own phone took about four hours, which means that even if she values her time at only minimum wage, which she don't, trust me, I know. It cost her nearly 440 US dollars to fix her phone herself when Apple would have done the work for $110 less. The only way then that this makes any sense is if you live three to five hours away from an Apple store. Actually, no. Even then, a whole ass iPhone SE third gen costs less than what Sarah paid to fix her own screen. And that's before any trade-in credits or carrier subsidies on that new device. It's almost like making this an awful value for their customers was Apple's goal from the start. But hold on, you might be thinking. Maybe this becomes a better value for a small time repair shop who buys the tools like we did. Well, as far as we can tell, that's unlikely. Aside from the parts pricing being insultingly high, they require a device serial number in order to order replacements. Remember, that'll prevent any casual repair hustler from having inventory on hand that's ready for potential customers. And if you have to wait for the replacement anyway, then starting to see a pattern here, you might as well just go straight to the Apple store. It's what we expected, but I can't help but still be disappointed. This could have been a huge step forward for right to repair and Apple could have been at the forefront. But it's obvious now that we've dug deeper that the program was designed to be as unappealing as possible. Apple's exact reasons for making self-service repair suck are as impenetrable as they always are. I don't know anything about what you're talking about. But some obvious guesses include increasing profit margins. I mean, if you can charge more for the individual parts compared to if they bought the whole thing, I guess, that's good for your shareholders. Pushing users to buy new devices rather than continue using their old ones, or just maybe as simple as having something to point to when government pressure increases to support right to repair. So they can say, hey, look, we tried and no one did it. So clearly this doesn't matter that much. Man, this sucks. Unlike our sponsor, Vulture. Vulture provides high performance cloud servers, bare metal, storage, and managed Kubernetes at a fraction of the cost of big tech. You can deploy instances with your preferred OS through 12 pre-selected operating systems, and they have the ability to bring your own ISO. Their networking features are optimized for multi-cloud deployments thanks to VPC peering and Direct Connect, and with 25 server locations worldwide, you can spin up a low latency infrastructure solution for wherever your users are. With Vulture Talon Cloud GPU, you can deploy fractions of NVIDIA A100s to affordably handle even the most advanced workloads. And with the Vulture Kubernetes engine, they take a load of the hard work on for you so you can operate and scale with confidence using a 100% free control plane. Right now, you can receive an exclusive 30-day $150 code for new signups. Just go to getvulture.com slash LTT to try Vulture today. If you guys are looking for something else to watch, the iPhone 13, well, it's a pretty great phone as long as it isn't broken. So we've got our full review linked down below.